Look around you. Everything you see was made by an artist. Whether it be an architect that designed this room, an industrialist who designed these seats, or God who designed each and every one of us. Everything is possible because of creators. We sometimes forget to see this basic thing in life because we are constantly moving, because we live in a society where everything is go, go, go. Did the fact that an artist made these things ever cross your mind? Well, I want to explore this shortcoming in humanity by not being aware of the artist in our society. Art is the use of imagination to express ideas or feelings, particularly in drawing, painting, and sculpture. But why has this skill been celebrated for centuries? What is so essential about lines on paper, clay molded into a vessel, or stone chiseled into human form? You may, be, you may ask, how was art invented and who were the first to discover it? Well, let us go back in time to experience the journeys of our artistic predecessors, those who shaped the idea of art we all know of today. Going back 65,000 years, we venture into the caves of Spain, where the very first creation of abstract art was founded. Scientists found that the Neanderthals were the very first to discover art. But why was man making art, something so meticulous and so time-consuming, at a time of little knowledge? Scientists suggest that the reason behind these arts, engravings, and carvings were simply because of aesthetic purposes and beauty. This was the aspect of art that intrigued an artist we all know of today, Leonardo da Vinci. He lived a pretty normal life receiving standard education. However, he struggled to stay serious in learning some of his subjects. His artistic tendencies were first spotted by his father, who encouraged him to grow in that area and gain help from other artisans he knew. As his knowledge of art grew significantly, it caused him to become more interested in the way of art and understand the functionality of mechanics. Art brought out da Vinci's interest in learning. His use of mathematics bettered his understandings of architecture, and his studies in science enhanced his artworks. Looking at his art proves math was a vital part of every study. Years later, after moving from city to city in Italy, he painted the Mona Lisa, a painting we all know of as his most famous work. Even though this, even though this painting is famous now, it went unrecognized during the time it was created. Leonardo da Vinci was popular in his time, but most artists never had this same luxury. Moving forward, we arrived to the later Renaissance period when artists Michelangelo and Raphael emerged. Michelangelo was famous for his work in the Sistine Chapel and also for his many sculptures. However, these two artists were constantly in conflict with one another due to fighting for commissions. Although these two artists were quite famous during their time, it appears that, once again, their work only became famous years later. It is possible because of this weight, most artists become discouraged. Finally, we get to post-impressionalism art when Vincent van Gogh, another well-known artist, acquired some attention. Van Gogh was a Dutch painter who was known for his unique painting styles and vibrant colors. When he was younger, he was a quiet child, always spending his free time observing nature and becoming inspired by other artists' works. Misfortune struck, causing a period of depression in his life that made him withdraw from people, yet dive deeper into art. He developed his own artistic style with such vibrant colors and specific designs, a style so unique that no artist had thought of at that time. Although his methods in art were celebrated by others, he only sold one painting during his entire lifetime. The stress that comes with being an artist can get so overwhelming, especially for those previously mentioned. Van Gogh's colorful symphonies on canvases became dull, mundane experiences. The artists of our past have proved the point that art is not, is not as respected as it should be. Leonardo da Vinci was popular during his art career. He sold a few paintings and was commissioned several times. Yet his art did not become famous until years later. Artists of the Renaissance were also commissioned but suffered great challenges like being seen because it was so rare. Vincent van Gogh only sold one painting during his entire lifetime. All of these artists, including many more, had a difficult time during their careers selling their art and even some went unnoticed. Does our society really take that next step into genuinely appreciating art and its artists? Why is it that art is the outlier and is now being removed in schools because it is seen as a less important subject? As a society, we are ignoring the importance of the arts in making people, more so students, draw away from it. We all can agree that education is important for adolescents. Some can agree that art should play a huge role in the learning process, while others can agree that there are better subjects to focus on. 
Although science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM, are essential to a child's learning experience, R should be included because it allows their brain's right side to work, which is vital to children's growth. R should be emphasized in all aspects of the K-12 educational system for three main reasons. First, art is an important part in a child's development. Second, art allows skills to grow that helps children, or art allows skills to develop that help children learn. And third, art plays a valuable role in helping with mental health. Growing up in this past decade, where electronics are practical for living, it is hard to find time to put the device down and experience the revolt. Kids have been lacking hands-on experience recently and most have become addicted to iPads and other devices. Having a mind with an unlimited imagination is vital to adolescents and technology is impeding that through critical developmental years. Art is the key that unlocks multiple doors to creativity and imagination, which is extremely useful for growing children. Touching the earth, really experiencing its beauty in art, creates a mind filled with wonders and creativity, not a technological box. Along with this, being involved with the arts as a child helps develop the brain capacity, meaning art helps expand their knowledge and deepen their interest in stimulation. According to the American Congress of Rehabilitation Medicine, creating and experiencing art can enhance brain functions by increasing brain wave patterns, emotions, and the nervous system. Not only does it positively affect these, but it also raises serotonin levels in the brain. Some kids may not have the ability to understand the world the same as others. They may have been born with a disability or brain disorder, or something that could cause them to delay the learning and growing process. Having the chance to make art could help them express their feelings and who they are. These kids are able to develop essential skills through art, which is sometimes an avenue that others forget can be possible. Studying the arts in school and as a child or teen cognitively advances a student mind. One does not have to be good at art for it to be considered art. As long as it makes sense to them, it is art. No matter who a child is, what their background is, or what causes them to be different, art is for everyone and is most important for their growth and for their development. School is essential for every child. However, for, for many children, it is not the most enjoyable experience they encounter. Including art in the curriculum can allow it to be more pleasing to the students' minds. A mandated curriculum can sometimes be less engaging for, student, for most students, but allowing them to express their creativity can not only boost their understanding, but allow them to want to come back to school each day and want to learn. In recent years, a large portion of schools has eliminated art from the curriculum due to a lack of funding. School administrators considered art to be the subject that was least important and therefore could be removed. The CSS Act, that, the CSS Act focused mainly on core subjects that would increase student standardized testing scores and found that art did not do anything to benefit them. Although art may not be a subject covered on the SAT, and it may not be something every student does in the future, it is still critical for helping to develop students' brains. In 2015, a study was done by the College Board showing that students who have taken four or more years of art class scored 92 points higher on the SAT than students who take less than a year. This proves that art is not, in fact, is not a waste of time and is, in fact, helpful for important tests. The use of art helps children with the development of motor skills, language skills, social skills, decision-making, risk-taking, and inventiveness. Leonardo da Vinci is a perfect example of a student who needed the arts in order to be successful in mathematics and science. Taking away art from his curriculum would not have allowed him to become, to aspire into the artist we all know him as today. Art and math go hand in hand and we can see that day to day. This is proven by the golden ratio. All things are created uni uniquely, however specifically designed using different shapes, colors, dimensions, and calculations. Art and expressing one's creativity triggers many different functions in the brain which ultimately allows one to grow, especially in school. More than one in three high school students suffer from mental disorders such as depression and anxiety. According to Mental Health America, MHA, Research has shown that most teens are suffering from poor mental disorders, and they found that high school and college environments are at fault. There's a lot of stress that is put onto a person during these years of their lives, life. There is pressure to succeed, to know future plans, to make friendships and relationships, and so much more. Whether it relates to school or not, this is the age when society is basically saying, get your life together. Not only could this idea cause students to suffer from severe anxiety and depression, but the majority of them remain silent. They do not seek help. Art can be a quiet way of help, a way to keep students balanced throughout the school day. It can provide a way to express themselves without them feeling embarrassed or different. 
It is a way to help students cope with these disorders and taking it away from them is ignorant. Having it included throughout elementary school and especially in the high school is important, helpful, and effective for most minds. And for those who believe it is not a solution for anyone, it is at least beneficial for those quiet children. It may be left unsaid, but many adolescents need art in their lives. Whether it be to help them learn, help cope with their problems, or simply because they are interested in it, art is crucial and should not be ignored in education. This is everyone's future, and doing what is possible to help make a better environment for the next generations will really benefit every person. In 2002, the No Child Left Behind Act was signed into law by former President George W. Bush, ensuring that STEM learning was most important and should be administrators' main focus in education. However, there is always room to include art and learning, no matter what grade someone is in. There are ways to do this without making it the main study. Da Vinci was able to further understand mathematics because of his interest in art. They both corresponded to one another, which allowed him to create th the things he did and later become so famous for. Admittedly, there are some students that are not artistically inclined and even some students that despise art. Although that may seem, un although that may seem unfair, how is it fair for an artist to write a 15-page paper that determines their graduation? Life is not always fair, and we sometimes have to complete tasks that are the opposite of our interests. Engaging in challenging assignments or uneventful tasks builds character. It puts our mind to work, which is beneficial for both, of, both our brains and our mood. Although it may not seem like it, messing around with some paper and crayons can enlighten one's mind. Even though some believe art might not be the most important class to have or the most interesting, Art and studying it is necessary for our education. Everything is here because of art, creativity, inventiveness, and inspiration, which sparks creation and everyone needs to appreciate that. Removing art from our world would be the same as removing a heart from a human body. Both would not be able to function without it. Everyone must make a safe place for growing artists and create an environment for those who are learning to be more creative. Unlike the artists of our past, our current society can encourage artists and allow them to feel seen rather than neglected. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Since we were made in his image, we were designed to be creators. God has called us to be artists, to not destroy this earth, but to create things from it. With this evidence, art should be emphasized in every aspect of the K-12 educational system. It is the best decision that can be made for the youth and for the future. Art is important for a child's development, art allows skills to develop that system learning, and art plays a valuable role in helping with mental health. These statements, these statements matter to all adolescents, to all teachers, to all administrators, and to all artists. They all deserve the chance to be seen, even if it is through something that does not make sense to everyone. Creativity is obviously needed in the world, and by encouraging it early, we can bring great artists to each generation to come. Thank you. Really great job, Destiny. I really uh, love your topic. Um, the reality is administrators often have to decide whether to spend money on arts programs or sports programs. Um, you are at a board meeting and they are deciding whether or not to start a football program or to hire three new art teachers so that every student gets one period of art per week. What is your pitch? Well, obviously, I would prefer the art program, but I'm sure most people would prefer the um, football um, thing, and I feel like the money could go towards that, because you don't necessarily need an art teacher to teach art. Like, anyone can really teach art, or if they can't teach it, and if they don't know anything about it, they can at least encourage it. So, like, in classes where students have free time, they can just encourage um, them to draw, to teach them what they know, just things like that. Okay. Thank you. So that actually picks up where I wanted to ask my question is, um, as you know, I've taught science classes. I did not necessarily volunteer to teach any art classes, and the only thing that came close is I partnered with Mrs. Noble to teach, right? So, um, yeah, so she would teach me things in that class, right? Um, what would your advice be to a science teacher? Uh, I love your argument that it doesn't. We don't need an art teacher necessarily. That art or an art curriculum. It can be through all subjects. I think that's wonderful. But what would you actually give to a, someone who is trained in some other field 
And now you're saying, and I want you to teach art as well in your class. Um, that was a good question. Um, <laughs> so, I guess just basically what I said for Miss Murray, like just encouraging it, allowing them to draw, um, like encouraging assignments that also come with an art project and for the students who aren't necessarily into art as much, just like a writing portion. Um, and you can't like grade art based on if it's good or not. You grade based off the um, hard work and effort that the student put into it. So you don't have to know everything about art to grade it, to um, teach it in your class, just like encouraging it, really. Ms. Schober, wonderful job with your presentation. Um, but do you think it's time for us to expand the definition of art? Because usually by default, we think about art as being something we see in a museum, a sculpture, seeing a painting or something of that nature. But um, there's a movie called Waiting for Superman. And in that movie, there's a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey Canada that says, when you're looking at a teacher in a classroom, students, I want y'all to hear this. When you're looking at a teacher in a classroom, you're watching an artist at work. They're painting a canvas of material for people to absorb and to respect. Do you think it's time for us to start telling people or sharing with people that art is beyond just a natural artifact or something physical you could touch, but you're actually seeing art by somebody exercising their talent or their gift, and that is something to be respected and valued and absorbed also? Yeah, I actually agree with that. So I feel like when people think of art, they think of like drawings, painting, sculptures, things in museums. But art is not just that. Art is everyone in the world, whether it's an artist that draws, an artist that um, sings, an artist that teaches, an artist that builds, an artist that like just does anything really. I feel like people need to be more aware of the fact that everyone is art is an artist, and um, I'm trying to uh, basically just make everyone see and not neglect that fact. Thank you so much, Felicity. I, I really enjoyed your topic. Um, the um, question I have, you, um, your distribution here is art should be emphasized in all aspects of K through twelve educational. Uh, the K through 12 educational system. So what are schools, what are some other schools besides Logos doing to emphasize art? Like what would you point to as examples of schools that are really excelling in this area? So I've been very fortunate to go to a school that encourages art, um, but I don't really necessarily know um, how other schools include art. I know like for college, there are specific art schools. Um, but wait, what was your question? So my question is, what does it look like to emphasize, that's your thesis, yeah. art should be emphasized in all aspects of education. What would that look like, uh, practically? So just including it through any class. Um, it could be like a visual representation of a current project, um, a hand-drawn picture that relates to a subject, um, or even a slideshow that goes step by step to what's being said. Like any of those things can be considered art and can really just benefit the artists in the room and even every other student, even those who don't really like art. Did that answer your question? Felicity, is art appreciation an acquired taste? Um, why do you think some people enjoy looking at a painting or a sculpture and other people do not? Um, well, some people, I feel like, will just look at it and be like, oh, that's cool, um, because I don't really understand it. Um, but I feel like everyone can see it and, like, think something. Like, like they won't just ignore it. Um, they'll just be like, oh, okay, cool. But, like, there are people that um, really do appreciate and have a really deep understanding of the hard work and time that was put into these, like, paintings and drawings. Um, and... Just, I think everyone should be more like aware or and just like be more appreciative of like all art work. Thank you. So I have a question for the audience. How many of you think that Felicity is an excellent artist? Please raise your hand. <laughs> all 
right. Um, now, for those of you who think you're a better artist than Felicity, please raise your hand. Yeah. 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 All right. My point, Felicity, is of course you gave your senior thesis speech on art. Okay, so it's a both a compliment and a little bit of a jab as well, all right? But know that I love you and care about you, right? So, of course you do. Um, you are an excellent artist, both naturally talented, gifted by God, but I've also seen you put a lot of hard work into your art and improving your art, and you are an example of excellence in that. Um, as a teacher, I have tried to include art into my science classes and things, the most difficult part I've found is not including in my curriculum, it's convincing students that they can do art. So as we just saw, everybody really agrees that you're good at art, and if I asked them how, you know, if we did some rating scale, we would have plenty of people to put themselves at zero on their ability level. So um, as a teacher, that's my challenge. So for you, what would you say to teachers that you're trying to encourage and they're meeting with this challenge of students' confidence levels just being at zero? on how they should continue to try to encourage art in the curriculum. So, <clears throat> um, I feel like some students that get discouraged, they're like, oh, I can't draw at all, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, it's very hard to encourage those students to just like push themselves just to do something, whether it's a stick figure or a really cool painting. Um, Cause like, I feel like some students are just like stubborn, but <laughs> so I don't know. Cause like when we had our PA natural history class, I know like some students just like was like, oh, I really don't want to do this, but they did, they did it in the end. And we all have our little books filled with all the pictures and all the things we learned. I mean, you can all look back on them, whether it was a line and scribbles of color around it or a really cool picture of flower. We all have something to look back on and say like, oh, we did that. Um, so just, I guess like encouraging them and pushing them to do it and then maybe they'll like realize that there is something in the end for them to realize like that they got something out of it. Thank you. Ms. Shelburne, what advice would you provide a teacher or educator to solicit or encourage more attention towards art. You mentioned your statistics and other things during your presentation, but of course we're just within this small space. Um, do you forecast or foresee how social media or the advocacy of art can be expanded? Or what advice would you just provide to kind of publicize it more that people can really hear the value of what art brings about in one's life or in one's world. So, you mentioned like social media and I feel like that's a good way of um, putting art out there because like you can post pictures of art and like millions of people can see it and that gives a level of appreciation but then there's those people that have like a few, only like a few followers that like will see it and then they'll feel like discouraged but just like Having friends that really like um, encourage your art definitely helps. Um, yeah. Um, thanks, Felicity. So um, I appreciated the section in your counterfactual where you talked about um, I had something that I've heard. That I, that I'm not, to, it's similar to Mr. Hortman's point, but not even I can't do art. I don't enjoy art. It's something I don't enjoy. Um, and you talked about how sometimes you just have to do things you you don't want to do, I like thesis maybe, <laughs> potentially. So I'm wondering, but is there something you think that can be done to make art more enjoyable? So what would you say to the student that says, I don't enjoy art? How, how do you think they could be learn to enjoy it? Well, first, just to get a deeper appreciation of it um, and just like really learn what it means to create art. Um, and what I mentioned before, like art doesn't really have to just be painting like it can really be anything and just allowing them to know that can maybe make it seem less like scary to do like, in a sense um so just like maybe even like like also like recognizing the fact that art does not have to look like like a specific thing like it can there is a thing called abstract art 
And so people that don't really know how to do art, they can at least do that. They can throw paint on a canvas, and that is art. And they should be proud of themselves even if they are able to do that. Great job, Felicity.